Hello, welcome to the session on HCF and LCM, namely highest common factor and least common multiple. In this session, we'll first understand what is HCF and what is LCM. Then we'll try and understand how to calculate HCF and LCM of two or more numbers. And finally, we'll understand in context of word problems, how do you identify if it's a HCF problem or a LCM problem, right? So let's get started. Here's a starter question. Let's say we are trying to prepare 45 liters of soup. Now, the question is, which of the following measuring cups can be used to measure exactly 45 liters of water for making soup? if you're allowed to use only full cups, right? Which means you cannot use part of a cup. You're allowed to use full cups. So which of these measuring cups can be used to measure exactly 45 liters of water for making soup, right? So what do we need to do here? Okay, so 45 liters. Can we use a three liter cup? Yes, we can, because we can use 15, of those cups to make 45 liters, right? Three times 15 is 45. Okay, can we use the five liter cup? Yes, of course, because we can use nine of those cups to make 45 liters because five times nine is 45. What about seven liter cup? Okay, no, we cannot use a seven liter cup simply because 45 cannot be divided by seven because seven times six is 42 but we still have three liters to go, okay? So we cannot use a seven liter cup. What about a nine liter cup? Yes, of course, because nine times five is 45. So we can use five of these cups to make 45 liters, right? Okay, now here's another question. Now that you have made 45 liters soup, let's say you are allowed to make multiple times, okay? The soup of 45 liters capacity, multiple times. So if we cook, 45 liters soup multiple number of times, then which of the following jars will be able to fill completely without wasting any soup? So if we are making 45 liters of soup multiple times, which of these jars can you fill completely without wasting any soup or without uh, having any capacity remaining in the, okay, in the jars? So it should be completely full. So can we, you, can we fill the 90 liter uh, jar? Yes, okay, because if you make 45 liters of soup twice, so 45 and 45 makes it 90. So we can make it twice, okay, and fill that cup completely. How about a 100 liter jar? No, we can't, because even if we make the soup twice, it will only fill 90 liters. The 10 liters will be left, and if we were to make a third time, then it would exceed the capacity, which means we can't completely fill that particular jar, 100 liter. How about a 135 liter jar? Yes, of course, okay, because if we make the soup thrice, 45 times three is 135. So we can make it three times and we can still fill 135 liters jar, right? Now, how are the questions on the left and right different? Okay, when we use the measuring cups, how is that question different than using a jar to fill uh, the soup? Well, one of them is pertaining to factors and the other one pertaining to multiples. The one on the left pertains to factors, okay? Because the factors of 45 are three, five, and nine, we can use the measuring uh, cups, which are measuring three liters, five liters, and nine liters respectively, right? Seven is not a factor of 45, so we cannot use seven liters. On the other hand, on the right-hand side, we have multiples of 45. Because we are allowed to use the 45 liters of multiple times, when we are trying to fill each of these jars. So we can fill 90 liters because 90 is the second multiple of 45. We can fill 135 liters because 135 is the third multiple of 45. And precisely that reason, we cannot fill the 100 liter jars because 100 is not a multiple of 45, right? So the right-hand side pertains to multiples, the left-hand side pertains to factors. And you have done the concepts on factors and multiples, right? Now, one thing to remember here, which we'll use it subsequently towards the end of the lesson today, is factors are always smaller than the number. So if we look at the factors, three, 
45 and 9 are smaller than 45, right? They can be either smaller or they can be also equal. For example, 45 itself is a factor of 45, okay? But factors cannot be bigger than the number, okay? Remember that. So they are either smaller than the number or they are equal to the number, but factors cannot be bigger than the number. On the other hand, if you look at the multiples, they are bigger than the number. If you look at 90 and 135, they are bigger than 45. Okay, so the multiples can either be bigger or they can be equal. For example, 45 itself is a multiple of 45. So multiples can be bigger or equal. They cannot be smaller than the number. On the other hand, factors can be smaller or equal. They can never be bigger than the number. Okay, so remember that. Factors small, multiples big. Correct? So that brings us to this concept of highest common factor. Now let us understand this through an example. Liz has two pieces of string, one eight centimeters long and the other 12 centimeters long. She wants to cut them up to produce smaller pieces of string that are all of the same length with no string left over. What is the greatest length in centimeter that she can cut, right? So let us understand this question. So first of all, she starts with two strings. One is 12 centimeters long and the other is eight centimeters long. What is she doing? She is cutting them into smaller pieces of string, right? And they are of equal length, which means she is trying to find factors of 12 and factors of 8, right? So let's first look at factors of 12. As you can see from the factor bug, factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. That means if she wants to cut the 12 centimeters uh, long string equally, then she needs to have one of these lengths of the string, okay? So it can either be one centimeter long, wherein she can make 12 such pieces because it's 12 centimeter long string. So if she cuts one centimeter each, it will be 12 pieces. If she cuts it into two centimeters long, okay, strings, then she can cut six pieces out of 12. If it is three centimeters, she can cut four pieces. If it is four centimeters, she can cut three pieces and so on, okay? Six centimeters long, she can only cut two pieces. From 12 centimeters okay i think that's fairly easy to understand the same goes with the eight centimeters long string okay if i look at eight centimeters what are the factors of eight if you look at it the factors of eight are one two four and eight which means the length of the string that she cuts can either be one centimeter long wherein she can cut eight pieces out of the long string of eight centimeters uh it can be two centimeters long string wherein she can cut four pieces or it can be four centimeters long string wherein she can cut two pieces right now since all the smaller strings are all of the same length okay we not only have to find the factor we also have to find a common factor of 12 and 8 right so it has to be a common factor so which length of the string is common to both 12 centimeters and 8 centimeters long if you look at it, okay, on the right hand side, if you look at the factor bug, the factors that are common are one, right? One is common to both, two and four, which means we can either have one centimeter long string, two centimeters long string, or four centimeter long string. We cannot have the three centimeters long or six centimeters long strings because the eight centimeter uh, string cannot be cut into three centimeters and six centimeters respectively, right? So these two are gone. So we can have one, two or four centimeters long string because that's common factor to both 12 and eight. If you look at the question carefully, it says, what is the greatest length? Okay, which means now that we have found out the common factors, we need to find out the highest of the common factor, right? The greatest length, which in this case, as you can see is four centimeters because four centimeters is the greatest length of the string which can be cut from both 12 and eight centimeters string respectively, right? And hence the correct answer is four centimeter. And that's what get, brings us to this concept of highest common factor. As you can see, out of the factors that are common, the highest one is the highest common factor, right? So how do you find HCF of two or more numbers? The HCF of two or more numbers is the highest number that is a factor of all the given numbers. There are two methods of finding HT. One is the normal factor method, okay, where we list down the factors and find out the common factors and so on. So let's do that. 
if I list down, let's say, let's take an example, okay? Let's say we are finding HCF of 36 and 60. If you were to list down factors of 36, okay, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. And if you were to list down the factors of 60, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. Now, these are factors. Which are the common factors now? If you look at the common factors which appear in both the list, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay, these factors appear in both the list. So which is the highest of the common factors? If you look at the list, okay, out of the common factors that we listed, the highest one is 12, and hence the HCF of both these numbers is 12. Isn't that as simple as that? So we list down the factors of both numbers, find the common ones, and out of the common factors, the highest one is your highest common factor. But now with small numbers, like 36 and 60, this process is possible, okay? We can list down the factors and so on. However, when the number gets bigger, okay, this may not be practical. So we can use another method, which is the prime factor method, okay? You must have learned prime factor de decomposition. Okay, you can use the ladder method or you can use the okay, factor tree method and you can list down the prime factors of each number. So let's do that. Let's use a ladder method in this case. So which are the prime factors of 36? Okay, 36 goes into 2 18 times. 18 goes into 2 9 times. 9 no longer goes into 2, but it goes into 3 3 times and 3 goes into 3 once. So the prime factors of 36 are 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Remember this, the method of prime factor decomposition, okay, wherein we uh, decompose or we break up a number into its prime factors. Let's do the same for 60. Okay, if you look at 60, again, it goes into 2 30 times. 30 goes into 2 15 times. 15 goes into 3 5 times and 5 once. Okay. So the prime factors of 60 are 2 into 2 into 3 into 5. All right. To find the HCF, all we need to do is find out which prime factors are common to both the numbers. Okay, so which are the prime factors which are common to both the numbers? We can find that it's 2, 2, and 3, right? There are two 2s which are common and one 3 which is common. That's it. You multiply these common prime factors and you get HCF for both the numbers. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. Remember, the earlier method where we listed down the factors, we had got the same answer. The HCF of 36 and 60 is 12. Right. Now let's go to the concept of LCM, the least common multiple. Once again, let's understand this using an example. A school purchases workbooks in packs of 10 and textbooks in packs of 15. The school needs exactly the same number of workbooks as textbooks so that they can be paired up for the students. What is the minimum number of each pack that must be bought so that all the books are paired? Well, so first of all, okay, we have workbooks which come in the packs of 10 and we have textbooks which come in packs of 15, right? Because the workbooks comes in packs of 10, and the textbook comes in packs of 15. Okay, what we can do is the more packs we buy for each of them, we find the multiples of each of them. For example, if we buy two packs of workbooks, we get 20. If we buy three packs of workbook, we get 30 workbooks and so on. So as you can see, it is nothing but listing down the multiples of 10. The same is the case with textbooks. Okay, if I buy two packs of textbooks, I get 30 textbooks in all, which is the second multiple of 15, right? Three packs gives me 45. So as you can see, we have listed down the multiples, right? And because the school needs exactly the same number of workbooks and textbooks, because they need to be paired up, we are not only looking at multiple, we are looking at common multiple. So which are the multiples that are common to both 10 and 15? As you can see, out of the multiples that we have listed, 30, 60, 90 are common. Right? 
because 30 can be paired, 30 workbooks can be paired with 30 textbooks, 60 can be paired with 60 and so on. So these are the three multiples which are common. The question is, what is the minimum number of each pack that must be bought, right? Minimum. So which of these multiples is minimum? So we can always buy in groups of 30. However, the minimum is 30. So that's the lowest common multiple. So out of the multiples which were common, the least of them was 30. And hence the LCM of 10 and 15 was 30. So we can have, we have to buy 30 pairs of workbook and textbooks respectively, which means we need to buy three packs of workbooks because workbooks comes in packs of 10. So for 30, we need three packs and we need to buy two packs of textbooks because textbooks comes in packs of 15. Two of them will make it 30. Right? So that's least common multiple. Now let's understand how do we calculate the LCM of two or more numbers, okay? The LCM of two or more numbers is the smallest number, which is a multiple of all the given numbers, okay? The way method of finding multiples, again, there are two methods. First is the multiple method and the other is the prime factor method. So let's take an example. Let's say we need to find the LCM of 12 and 20. Let's understand the multiples method first, okay? This is the easiest of methods. But then you list down the multiples of 12, you list down the multiples of 20, and then find the common multiples, okay? So what are the multiples of 12? Let's find the initial few multiples of 12. So as you can see, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and so on, okay? So these are initial few multiples of 12. Likewise, let's list down the initial few multiples of 20. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on, right? So these are multiples. Which are the common multiples out of these? If you look at the common multiples, you will find that it's 60 and 120 out of the multiples that we have listed. Okay, there will be many more common multiples had we listed more multiples of each. But for time being, out of the ones which we have listed, the common multiples are 60 and 120. Right? Which is the least of the common multiples? As you can see, it is 60. So 60 is the LCM of 12 and 20. Now let's look at the prime factor method of finding the same uh, okay, LCM. For this, once again, let's list down the prime factors of 12 and 20. Okay, Prime factors, let's use ladder method. 12 goes into 2 6 times, 6 goes into 2 3 times, and 3 goes into 3 once. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Okay? How about 20? 20 goes into 2 10 times. 10 goes into 2 5 times and 5 goes into itself once. So 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Okay. Now listen to this carefully. How do you find LCM of 12 and 20 using prime factors? Well, which are the common uh, common prime factors in both groups? Okay. It's two twos, right? One two and the other two. So the common prime factors are two twos. Which are the uncommon prime factors okay as you can see the uncommon ones are three and five so you list down the common prime factors you list down the uncommon prime factors right and finally you multiply both common and uncommon okay now listen remember this carefully you list down the common prime factors you list down the uncommon prime factors and you multiply the common and the uncommon prime factors so common ones are two and two Whereas uncommon ones are three and five. So your LCM will be two times, two times, three times five, which is 60. So remember, we had the same answer in the earlier method, which was listing down of prime, uh, listing down of multiples, right? So remember these methods for finding HCF and LCM. Now, finally, before we end the lesson, okay, given a word problem, how do we identify whether it's a LCM question or a HCF question, okay? Some rule. HCF is highest common factor. Remember that, factor. And factors are always smaller than the given number. Smaller or equal to, but it can never be bigger, right? So whenever you have a question where you're given big values and you are supposed to find something small, okay, that's where it is a HCF question. Remember, we had a 12 centimeters long string and an 8 centimeters long string, right? 
and we had to cut them into smaller pieces of equal length. So from a big value, we were going into small value, which means we are finding the factor and hence it is a HCF question, right? In a LCM question, as against that, because LCM is least common multiple and multiples are equal or bigger than the number, right? Multiples are always bigger than the number or equal to number. LCM questions will be the ones where the numbers are small and your answer will be something bigger. Okay, you're looking out for something bigger. For example, uh, the workbooks comes in packs of 10, textbooks comes in packs of 15, 10 and 15, right? What is the minimum number of books you need to order, right? So that they can be paired and blah, blah, blah. So the number of books you order clearly has to be bigger than 10 or 15, right? Because you're ordering in packs of 10 and 15. So the total number of books you order will be bigger, right? The answer is 30, remember. So you're going from a small value, 10 and 15, to a bigger value. Bigger value means multiple. So hence, that question is a LCM question. Okay, so as a thumb rule, I'll repeat it again. Small value is given, you're supposed to find something big, that's a LCM question. Big value is given, you're finding something small, that's a HCF question, right? Well, that's the end of today's session. Let me just quickly recap, okay, what we learned in today's session. First, we learned what is HCF and LCM. Then we went on to learn how do we go about finding the HCF and LCM using two different methods for each, remember. And finally, we saw how in the context of word problems, we can identify whether it's a HCF related question or a LCM related question, right? I enjoyed bringing this session to you. I hope you understood the concept as well. Thank you.